dear children i welcome you all for the lesson today can you remember what we did during the last week i have explained you unit 1 units and dimensions and we discuss about measurements and under measurements i explain you about the instruments that we use in the laboratory and today also we are going to learn competency level 1.4 so under competency level 1.4 you will learn how to select the apparatus and taking measurement accurately without having any error so under this competency level you are going to learn about these instruments now we did vernier caliper and i explain parts of the vernier caliper and i explain you how to use the vernier caliper to get measurements accurately there are different parts by using each and every part of the vernier caliper we learned how to take measurements now today we will move to the next instrument the micrometer screw gauge micrometer screw gauge okay this is the picture of a micrometer screw gauge a instrument recommended for a level students the micrometer screw gauge is used to measure even smaller dimensions than the vernier caliper so i told you when we want to take measurements accurately we used vernier caliper so vernier caliper is used to take readings in the range 0.1 mm to 10 cm range we use the micrometer screw gauge to get the reading in the range 0.01 mm to 25 mm range if you select the instrument to get the measurement accurately so the fr fractional error is less so therefore under this unit we are going to get the reading accurately to minimize the error to minimize the error so now we will see about the next step before learning about the micrometer screw gauge you should know the working principle of the micrometer screw gauge if you go through this picture you can see the mechanism inside the micrometer screw gauge here and will and you can see the spindle the part of the spindle has a thread has a thread and the end of the spindle is connected to the ratchet so when you turn the ratchet the spindle can move backward and forward so by rotating the ratchet you can move the spindle backward and forward and if you notice there is a circular scale here and it is graduated in the thimble so thimble also rotates with the ratchet so when you turn the ratchet the distance travel by the screw the distance travel by the screw can be measured by using this a uh, linear scale and the circular scale now we will see about the mechanism and the theory related to it if you can 
consider the ratchet. If you turn one complete rotation of the thimble, the distance travelled by this screw is called pitch thread, pitch thread, right? So this pitch thread can be calibrated in the main scale, main scale. If the pitch thread is one millimeter, the main scale of the micrometer screw gauge can be calibrated in millimeter divisions. If the pitch thread is half millimeters, we can calibrate the scale, main scale using half millimeter divisions. So this is how we use the mechanism inside the micrometer screw gauge to design the main scale and the circular scale. So if I explain again, the main scale is calibrated by using the pitch of the instrument. And circular scale is graduated by dividing pitch into smaller divisions, pitch into smaller divisions. So this mechanism is used to develop a micrometer screw gauge. Right, if we come to the theory part once again, we can define pitch of the instrument by using the mechanism I have taught you. So this is the thread, this is the thread in the spindle. This is the thread pitch. So if you turn one complete rotation of the circular scale, the distance traveled by the screw is called the pitch of the instrument. Once again, if you turn one complete rotation of the circular scale, the distance traveled by the screw is defined as the pitch of the instrument. So if I consider about micrometer uh, screw gauge, to ensure the accuracy of the micrometer, the spindle, the thread in the spindle should be machined precisely to give a thread pitch of one millimeter or half a millimeter according to the instrument. And at the same time, I want to tell you another important factor. These instruments, micrometer screw gauges, are metal instruments. The micrometer screw gauge is calibrated at a certain standard temperature. So we can get the accurate measurement if we use this instrument in that particular temperature, in that particular temperature. So accuracy of the measurement is high. So let me see the next step. In a laboratory, we have micrometers, micrometers. So pitch of the micrometer can be one millimeter and pitch of the micrometer screw can be half a millimeter. So if the pitch is one millimeter, one millimeter, you can see the main scale and the circular scale like this. Zero, one, two, three, four, like this. And number of divisions in the circular scale is 100. You can mark the circular scale like this and the main scale like this. This is the shape of the main scale and the circular scale. And if the pitch is half millimeter divisions, if I mark the circular scale like this and the main scale with a linear path, 
this is 0, 1, 2, 3 millimeters and you can mark half millimeter divisions also like this. So, you can draw this is 45th division and 50 division. This is how you see the circular scale. If the pitch of the instrument is half millimeters, there are 50 divisions in the circular scale. If the pitch is 1 millimeter, you have 100 divisions in the circular scale. So, by considering this principle, we can define the main scale and the circular scale of the micrometer screw gauge. I hope you all understood. So, when you take the micrometer screw gauge to your hand, you have to check these things, main scale and the circular scale, main scale and the circular scale. So, there are two different patterns. Okay. Now, we will see the standard micrometer screw gauge, standard micrometer screw gauge we use in the laboratory. This is the anvil and this is the spindle. The edge of the spindle is connected to the ratchet, connected to the ratchet and you can notice the main scale is graduated on the sleeve and the circular scale is graduated on the thimble on the thimble. So, we can move this spindle by rotating the ratchet, by rotating the ratchet. So, and there are, you can notice a lock nut also here. The function of this lock nut, I will show you when I am explaining the practical to you all today. And at the same time, you should know the mechanism behind the ratchet. So, I told you the ratchet is fixed to the end of the spindle, end of the spindle. When you keep the object in between the an anvil and the spindle, if you keep the object in between the anvil and the spindle and if object is gripped properly, gripped properly or if it is held tightly, the ratchet rotates freely, ratchet rotates freely. Rotating freely means it does not give any tighten to the object that we have kept between the anvil and the spindle, right? The ratchet can prevent deforming or damaging the object being measured. I hope you understood. So, this is the function of the ratchet in this uh, apparatus. So, actually Putala, when you use this instrument to move the spindle, we use only ratchet. By using the ratchet, we move the spindle, we move the spindle, right? So, when the object is properly gripped, you will hear a tick noise, you will hear a tick noise and you will hear continuously uh, this sound. That is called the ratchet mechanism, that is called ratchet mechanism. So, this is the function of the ratchet. And if you come to the lock nut, what is the function of the lock nut? Once you keep the object in between the anvil and the spindle, when you hear the first tick noise, we know that the object is gripped properly. Now, you can put the lock nut. So, once you put the lock nut, the spindle does not move, spindle does not move. So, you can get the reading accurately. So, the reading means the 
gap between the anvil and the spindle. So the gap between the anvil and the spindle can be given from the main scale reading and the circular scale reading. So this is how we use this instrument to get reading. This is how we use the mechanism to uh, get some sort of measurement. I hope you understood. Now shall we take the instrument and see what I have explained for you? Yes, I have the instrument with me now. Here, this is the micrometer screw gauge. This is the micrometer screw gauge we use in the laboratory. If you notice, uh, children, this is the ratchet. See, you can see I turn the uh, ratchet. I turn the ratchet. So when turning the ratchet, you notice, do you notice that the gap between the anvil and the spindle uh, can be changed, can be changed. So this is called ratchet. This is anvil and this is the spindle. And if you notice, I will show you, this is the sleeve and the circular scale is marked on the timber and the main scale is marked on the sleeve. Right? So when you want to move the spindle, we use the ratchet like this. I hope you understood. Right. The next thing, think that we want to get a certain measurement, certain measurement. So then what do you do? We keep the object in between the anvil and the spindle like this. By using the ratchet, we bring the, bring the anvil and the spindle close to each other, like this, like this. So, when the object is held tightly, you can hear the stick noise. Do you hear? Stick noise. If you rotate this, after that you can hear continuous stick sound sound. So that means the object is properly gripped between the anvil and the spindle. I hope you understood. After that you can get the measurement. So this is how we use this instrument to get a measurement. I hope you understood. Right. So after hearing the tick noise you are not supposed to turn the uh, ratchet. Okay? Do not turn the ratchet. So we will see uh, how we use this data to learn about the least count of the instrument and the zero error. So soon after you take the instrument to your hand, you have to check the scale. After that, you have to find the least count of the instrument. So least count of the micrometer screw gauge is like this. The least count is the distance moved by the tip of the screw when the screw is turned through one division of the circular scale. If you move the circular scale this much distance, if you rotate the circular scale this much distance, one division, the displacement of the tip of the screw, displacement of the tip of the screw is called the least count of this instrument. I taught you the main scale is graduated in millimeter divisions according to the according to the pitch thread. So least count is given by this equation pitch divided by total number of divisions in the circular scale. To get that tiny gap, you have to divide pitch with the total number of divisions in the circular scale. 
So if the pitch is 1 millimeters, I taught you the number of divisions should be 100. So then the least count of the instrument is 0 0.01 millimeters. But think that the pitch of the instrument is 0 0.5 millimeters. That means half a millimeter. So if it is the case, you have to divide with 50 divisions. If the pitch is half a millimeter, number of division on the circular scale should be 50. So from this one also, from this equation also, you will get the least count of the instrument is 0 0.01 millimeters. So finally, keep that in your mind. If the pitch is 1 millimeter, the circular scale has 100 divisions. If the pitch is half a millimeter, the circular scale has 50 divisions. So finally, the least count of the micrometer screw gauge is 0 0.01 millimeters. So this is the least measurement that can be taken by using the micrometer screw gauge. I hope you all understood. I hope you all understood. Okay, dear children, when I was explaining vernier caliper, I told you all, soon after taking the instrument to your hand, you have to find the least count of the instrument. After finding the least count, you have to check whether there is a zero error. So in this instrument also the same. After finding the least count, you are going to find the zero error. So this is it. Once again, we will take the instrument once again. This is how you find the zero error. You have to bring the anvil and the spindle in contact with each other. See, by rotating with the ratchet. And when you hear first stick sound, did you hear? First stick sound. After that, anyway, you will hear continuous stick sound. Right? At this moment, when anvil and the spindle are in contact with each other like this, the, the circular scale 0 and the datum line should be coincided this way. This is the middle line. This is called datum line. That line and the zeroth mark should be in contact with this. So if it is the case, we consider that there is no zero error in the instrument. Did you understand? We consider there is no zero error in the instrument. But normally, when you go to do practicals in to the lab, you don't get perfectly uh, correct instruments. Sometimes you will get faulty instruments. Understand? So anyway, you have to check. So sometimes you will see anvil and the spindle in contact with each other. The zeroth mark of the circular scale lies below the datum line. Sometimes you will notice the zeroth mark of the circular scale will lie above the datum line. These are these type of things you can see. So in a situation like this, you have to consider about the displacement of the zero from the datum line and give your final answer, give your final answer. So that is how we consider the zero error when you take measurements by using the micrometer screw gauge. I hope you all understood. Okay? Right. So, dear children, soon after, take the instrument to your hand. What do you do? Find, check the scale. After that, find the least count. 
after that check whether there is a zero error okay so these are the things and normally uh, according to the a level syllabus we use the micrometer screw gauge to get some special readings okay we use micrometer screw gauge to get the diameter of a tiny sphere to get the thickness of a metal sheet and we use uh, the micrometer screw gauge to get the diameter of a thin wire thin wire do you understand so these are the practicals related to your a level syllabus so you should know how to get the measurement accurately without having any errors without having any errors now let's see how to do this okay look at this this is the micrometer screw gauge and we are going to use the micrometer screw gauge to get the diameter of a tiny sphere so if you consider about uh, the diameter of a certain tiny sphere you can't find perfectly uniform tiny spheres do you understand so as science students to give the correct value you have to use scientific methods to get the final answer properly without having any error that is what we are going to learn today so because the spheres are not perfectly uniform we have to adopt a certain method to find the diameter of a tiny sphere tiny sphere right so first of all you'll have to keep the sphere between anvil and the spindle anvil and the spindle right so after that you can get the reading i will consider you are going to get a reading that is d1 after that you can turn the position you can turn the position what you have kept if, if it is kept like this diameter next time you will have to consider another diameter like this keep that this diameter in between the and we land the spindle and get another reading d2 d2 you have to get at least two reading you can get more than two but at least two readings is required to get the final answer so the diameter d is equal to d1 plus d2 divided by 2 this is how you get the accurate reading for the diameter of the metal sphere by using the micrometer screw gauge i hope you understood right so we will go to do another practical right think that you want to get the thickness of a metal sheet thickness of a metal sheet how do you do so once again i am going to tell you the these sheets are not perfectly uniform thickness can be different values understand but as science students we have to give a proper answer final proper answer so what do we do you take the thing that uh, this is the this is the metal sheet think that this is the metal sheet keep the un anvil and the spindle at this position and get the thickness t1 keep the anvil and the spindle between this position this place and get the reading t2 and keep the anvil and the spindle somewhere here and get the thickness t3 to so use several places it, uh, on on the sheet and get the average value so average thickness is 
t1 plus t2 plus t3 divided by 3. So, from this method, you can get the accurate reading for the thickness of the metal sheet by using the micrometer screw gauge. Micrometer screw gauge. I hope you understood. And next thing, we are going to find the diameter of a thin wire. This is not easy. We are going to find diameter of a thin wire. So, wires are lengthy and they are not straight, they are crooked. Sometimes the cross sectional area is not uniform. So, we have to be very careful at this moment. So, this is what we do. Think that this is the wire you got in the lab. We will select three places. This place. I will consider this place, this is x, I will consider this place is y and I will consider another place z. And we are going to take readings of the diameter in two perpendicular position at a certain position. Think that this place is this. Keep the anvil and the spindle and get one reading x1. From the same place, get another reading in perpendicular position Keep by keeping and we land the spindle. This is x2. So, take two readings in two perpendicular position at a certain position and get the average. So, diameter at this place d1 it is equal to x1 plus x2 divided by 2. So, same thing can be done for the other part, this place y. So, y also you can get two diameters d2. We will consider y1 plus y2 divided by 2. Take two readings in two perpendicular positions at the same time. How do you get two perpendicular positions? Like this one reading and turn this 90 degrees. See, look at my hand. Turn 90 degrees from the same place and get another reading. Understand? Get another reading. Okay. So, this is how you get D2. And this place, D3. I will consider the readings that you got in two perpendicular position is Z1 and Z2 get the reading. So, you have taken six readings. So, finally, diameter is equal to D1 plus D2 plus D3 divided by 3. So, this is how you get the diameter of the thin wire in the laboratory. You have to take six readings two readings in two perpendicular positions in one place and get the average. So, this is how you uh, use the micrometer screw gauge to get readings for uh, these type of measurements. Right. Now, let me see how to write the reading, the method of writing the reading. So, first of all, you have to get the main scale reading, main scale reading, main scale reading. And after that, you have to get the circular scale reading. Main scale is calibrated in half millimeter divisions, half millimeter divisions. Therefore, you can see 5 millimeter and 0 0.5 millimeter here. So, therefore, you can write reading fi 5.5 millimeters plus 25, 26, 27, 28. 28th division of the circular scale is in line with the datum line. Take that and get the least count, product with least count. 
So finally, the final answer is 5.78, 5.78 millimeters, 5.78 millimeters. So 5.878 is the gap between the anvil and the spindle, gap between the anvil and the spindle. So reading, this is how we take the reading. I hope you all understood. Okay, dear children, uh, this is the theory related to micrometer screw gauge. Uh, we, uh, this kind of micrometer screw gauge we use in the laboratory, but if you go to scientific laboratories, you will see a special micrometer screw gauge. This is the digital micrometer. This is the advanced micrometer screw gauge we use in this country now in scientific laboratories. So once you know the theory very well and you will be able to handle these apparatus and get the measurement. Okay, now if you notice these things, this picture, check the anvil and the spindle. It has a different shape. So to take circular shapes, we use that. Here you see the anvil and the spindle has a different shape. To get the measurement accurately, we can change the shape of the anvil and the spindle. And final answer can give to the to three decimal places by using this digital micrometer. Okay, dear children, uh, we will try to work out few problems related to uh, micrometer screw gauge. Find the reading of the given micrometer screw gauges. So what do you do first? What do you do? You have to get the main scale reading. You have to get the main scale reading. So the main scale reading here is, main scale reading is 6.5 millimeters. Number of divisions in the circular scale coincided with the datum line, 35, 36, 37. So that can be written as 0 0.37, 3.37 because you have to get the product with the least count. So finally, the answer is 6.87 millimeters, 6.87 millimeters. Now, if you move to the other question, this part. So, this is calibrated in half millimeter divisions, half millimeter divisions. So, 10, 11, 12. So the main scale reading here is 12 millimeters. Circular scale sometimes you will see this way because we rotate the uh, ratchet in the clockwise direction. This is 30 and this should be 35. So the segment in contact with the datum line is 32, 32. So final answer is 12.32 millimeters because we have to give the circular scale reading by using two decimal places because the least count of the instrument is uh, 0 0.01 millimeters. Right. So let me see the third question now. Says, Sometimes you don't see the uh, numbers marked in the scale, but you should be able to recognize it. See, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4.5. So 4.5 millimeters. Plus, number of divisions coincided with the datum line is 20, 21, 21 into 0 0.01 millimeters. So final answer is 4.71, 4.71 millimeters. 
I hope you understood the method of working out these type of problems, right? This is how you get the reading. Okay, if you move to this question, the zero of the given micrometer screw gauges, zero error of this. So, if you come to the first picture, right? So, this zero mark as move pass in the datum line. How many divisions? One, two, two divisions. So, we can write the zero error as 0 0.02 millimeters. Two. The distance between the two gap between two zeros is two gaps. 0 0.2 millimeters. How about this? The zeroth mark is below the datum line. So the gap between two zeros, one, two, three, three. So you can write the zero error as 0 0.03 millimeters. This is how you get the uh, error, end error of the instrument. For the micrometer screw gauge shown, find the zero error and the actual reading, actual reading. So if you go to, if you look at this picture, now consider Zeroth mark lies between the datum line, below the datum line. One, two, three. So, error is equal to 0 0.03 millimeters. Right? So, this little gap, normally we have to make readings from this zero datum line. Right? So this little extra also we are counting now. You have to subtract, remove that little length from the final answer because you have to measure from the datum line. We measure all the readings from the datum line. So if you consider this equation, this problem 5, 5.5, 6.5, Reading is 6.5 millimeters. This is 17, so plus 17 millimeters, 0 0.717 millimeters, so 6.67 millimeters. So you have to consider about the error. So if you measure from the datum line, this little you have to subtract. So that means you have to subtract 0 0.03. So this is 4, 6, and 6.64 millimeters. This is the actual reading of the instrument. I hope you all understood. Right. Now the problem. This is 2004 A level uh, question. Shall we start doing the problem? Yeah, you all tell me. What is it? Name the parts of the micrometer screw gauge labeled as A, B, C, and D. What is A? A. This is the main scale. Main scale. What is B? B is the circular scale. Circular scale. Yes? What is C and what is D? D is the ratchet. This is the sleeve. Okay, now we will move to the other part. What is the least count of the above micrometer screw gauge? So if you consider the main scale, there is half a millimeter divisions and there are 50 divisions in the circular scale. So you can write least count of the instrument is 0 0.5 millimeters divided by 50 divisions. So final answer is 0 0.01 millimeters. 
write down the scale reading for the diameter of the ball showing in one in millimeters showing in millimeters so this is the figure that they have given so find the number of readings main scale reading is 6 6 6 millimeters number of divisions in the circular scale coincided with the datum line is 45 46 48 48 right so the final answer is 6.48 millimeters 6.48 millimeters part 3 figure shows a situation in which the micrometer screw gauge is adjusted to determine zero error right now this one has a zero error that is what they are telling okay so if you consider this is the datum line and how many divisions uh, are there between the zero and the datum line one two three there are three gaps between two zeros so the error is error is 0 0.03 millimeters but it is above, above the datum line. So normally, when it is above, you have to measure from the datum line. That means you have to add that little to this answer because it is something less, less that you are taking because you are supposed to take the reading from the datum line, but now you take the reading from slightly above. Therefore, you have to add this little. So final answer is, uh, 6.48 plus 0 0.03 millimeters millimeters therefore the final answer is 6.51 millimeters 6.51 millimeters 6.51 millimeters right so we will move to question number 4 Write down the fractional error of the measurement of the diameter of the ball. Can you remember? I explain you the errors, method of expressing errors. Yes, method of expressing error. One method of expressing error is the fract fractional error. So, fractional error. Fractional error. How do you define? Least count divide by reading. So least count in this instrument is 0 0.01 millimeters. The final reading you got is 6.51. Both of them are in millimeters, so the fractional error can be written 0 0.01 divided by 6.51. So millimeters, millimeters get cancelled. So. So this is how you get the fractional error. So dear children, keep the equation in your mind. So for the exam, it will be easy. And at the same time, you can save your time when writing the answers. What is the precaution taken in micrometer screw gauge to avoid overpressing the object? What is that very important item that we have connected to the spindle? Yes, ratchet, ratchet. Do you understand? So we use the ratchet to uh, minimize, to minimize the uh, error, right? What is the precaution taken? Micrometers we avoid overpressing the object. We use what? Yes, ratchet. We use the ratchet and get it. So this is two thousand. Four A level question. These are the questions that has given. I think, dear children, you can answer these questions very well if you know the theory properly. So, we will meet once again. I hope you will uh, learn this. Have a nice day. Thank you.